I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your support. Hey y'all, it's Kay from The Literary Apothecary and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about Conspirata, which is book two in the Cicero Trilogy by Robert Harris. Um, also known as um, Lustrum, depending on which edition you got. So I gave this book four and a half out of five stars and I'll talk about why in just a minute. But first, a spoiler-free summary of this book. As is as it was with the first book, this is historical fiction, courtroom politics in ancient Rome. Book two takes up almost immediately after book one ended. Cicero is having to deal with his career and his enemies which are both ever changing. Um, he has achieved the summit of his ambition and becomes known as the world's first professional politician to some using his compassion and deviousness and his connections to overcome all obstacles that are in his way. This book was so, so good y'all. Like I said, I gave this four and a half out of five stars. Um, the beginning had me from chapter one, page one, I was sucked in, I was interested, I needed to know what was going to happen in this book. Um, the ending kept the momentum going into just such a spectacular ending, a spectacular way to end this book. I really want to read book three, um, I think it's called Dictator. I really, really want to get that into my TBR sometime soon because this book had such momentum at the end that it made me, if, my, if it wasn't for my already overflowing TBR, I would have started that right away. And also Robert Harris writes villains in such an incredible way that no matter who they are, and you know they keep changing in these books, throughout one book you have many different villains going on. Um, no matter who they are, you can't help but hate them. It is such an incredible way. He has such a way to write about Cicero and Caesar and Pompey in ways that, you know, this is ancient Rome. These are, and yet he writes their stories in a way that you can't help but feel for them. And I just am amazed when writers can take historical features, ancient Rome, um, and write it in such a relatable way that we know exactly what's going on. Um, so just to give you guys an idea, a little bit of Robert Harris's uh, writing his prose here, I've got two quotes from this book. They are spoiler-free quotes. They, I don't think they'll give away anything that happens in this book, um, but these are just two quotes that stood out to me that are spoiler-free, just to give you an idea of the prose in this book. Um, surely the gods, given their immortal powers, should be able to find more articulate means of communication than snowflakes. So back in the ancient Rome times, for some people, snowflakes were a sign of the gods trying to communicate with you. They're a sign of things to come. Um, and here in this quote, Cicero is saying like, these gods are smart gods. They're all powerful gods. They've got to have some other way to communicate. It can't be snowflakes because snowflakes are so light and airy and they melt easily. It's got to be something other than the snowflakes can't stand for communication with the gods. Um, and then the, and that just gave you a little bit of an idea of some of the humor that is in this book, courtroom politics, ancient Rome, you wouldn't expect a lot of humor in these books, but it does have that certain type of Roman humor that I just latched onto. Um, and then the second quote I have is just signifies, showcases the power that Cicero had in his speeches and his words. The weapons here were words and no one ever knew how to deploy words as well as Cicero. And so those are just two examples of the pros in this book. Like I said, the beginning and the ending were incredible. Um, what didn't work for me, why it gave it four and a half out of not five stars, was that um, the middle felt a little bit like it was 
it was a slow metal kind of drug along and I needed I wanted it a little bit more up tempo compared to the beginning and the end it was a lot slower and you know that might be intentional by Robert Harris that was you know maybe that's the way that it was for Cicero um, but it just felt like you know it took a little bit of a slug to get through the middle but beginning and the ending totally paid off 4.5 out of 5 stars nearly a 5 star I very nearly a 5 star and I can't wait to read the third and final book in this trilogy hopefully soon if you've read Conspirata let me know in the comments below what you thought of it what was your favorite moment in this book I think my favorite moment is just that ending just stayed with me for so long I couldn't get those images out of my head um, and if you've read this book, you know exactly what I mean. So um, that's my quick spoiler-free review for Conspirata by Robert Harris. I can't wait to read book three. As always, my Patreon and my Discord information will be in the description below. Keep reading and I love y'all to the moon and back. Bye.